honor to introduce um, a dear friend and brother in Christ who's going to share a few comments this evening, and that is Adam Edgerly. As I said earlier, Adam, um, graduate of Biola, two times over, two degrees in intercultural studies, went off after that to Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia, where he received his MBA. Um, Adam is a consultant. He is a coach. He is a pastor of a New Song LA, uh, a culturally diverse, um, innovative, entrepreneurial community right in Los Angeles. Um, Adam is on the board of trustees at Biola University, a frequent speaker at SCORE, and a uh, beloved brother to all of us. So please join me in welcoming Adam Edgerly. All right. I, I wanted to take a couple of minutes to thank you, Dr. Perkins, for the impact that you've had uh, on so many of us. And I actually met uh, Dr. Perkins when I was a student here at Biola many, many years ago. We're talking early 80s. And I had not heard of him, and someone explained to me who he was, and that my job was to introduce him as he was speaking in chapel. So I don't expect you to remember this, but we walked and we talked, and I asked you questions about how you wanted to be introduced. And uh, I remember you saying, I want you to tell them that I will, I will choose always to live among the poor. And so I was saying, okay, writing down, okay, living in low-income area. And he said, no, son, I said... I will live among the poor. And I'm like, OK. <laughs> Correction. Later, I came to know you through other people. And the image that comes to my mind is of God throwing a massive rock into a pond. And the rock has disappeared. It's below the surface of the water. But at the edges of the water are these massive ripples that keep hitting the sand. And everywhere I've gone, I run into huge ripples of John Perkins. Uh, over the years, I've lived in Atlanta for a time. I lived in Chicago for a time, Los Angeles. Uh, I was in a role where I helped to plant churches. And I would meet these young uh, college graduates, young professionals, and they were just passionate about moving into the inner city, into impoverished areas, redeveloping property, getting to know their neighbors, and revitalizing neighborhoods. And I started seeing this in different cities. I'd see it in Chicago. Then I would see it in Sacramento. Then I'd see it in the Bay Area. And I'd see it in Los Angeles. And they, they all had the same language. And I think it, there's just some kind of a weird underground um, cult thing happening <laughs> where they were all talking about um, re- they, they said relocation and, uh, and reconciliation and redistribution. They were saying, you know, we're going to do these three R's. Then they start wearing T-shirts with this guy's face on them. I've got several, okay? I um, started New Song LA Church about 15, 16 years ago. And our congregation was quickly filled with these young, energetic, young professionals who were walking in the legacy of Dr. John Perkins. And um, they pushed me as I had this passion for reconciliation and I had a passion for, for um, economic development and had been challenging churches that we need to partner with urban and suburban churches and revitalize neighborhoods. And we need to be in relationship with one another. This isn't just about some exchange of funds. This is about us being in relationship as God wants us to be one. And as I would teach these things, um, people would say that this sounds a lot like Dr. John Perkins. I've been heavily influenced by Carl Ellis, whom I, I know that you know well. And I think that there was a, a time when the three of us actually had an extended conversation. I traveled uh, teaching lectures with, um, with Carl Ellis over a, off and on for a period of about six years. And um, so he downloaded a lot of things into my head and into my psyche, and I've got this certain DNA. As I think about what's gone on over the last couple of decades, and I, I look back now at, um, at your life and the celebration of it, it reminds me of a couple of scenes from Scripture. Um, one of them is when Moses has been instructed by God to bring the elders to the tent of meeting, and that God is going to take from the spirit of Moses and put it on the elders. And as they go there, 
the Spirit of God begins to be poured out on these elders, and they begin to prophesy. And as they're prophesying, there's someone outside of that meeting, back in the camp, who starts to randomly prophesy. There are other people. And Joshua sees this, and he says to Moses, my Lord, stop them. And Moses turns to Joshua and says, are you jealous for me? Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all of the Lord's people were prophets, that he would pour out his spirit on all of them. Another passage that comes to mind is in the book of Acts in Antioch, where we are told in the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers, and there was Barnabas and Simeon called Niger and Lucius from Cyrene, and Manaen who grew up with Herod the ruler and Saul. And here's a congregation just filled with prophets, prophets from all different cultures, from around the world, from different socioeconomic backgrounds, a guy who even had grown up with a king. And they're there in this church community, and they are all prophets. And the vision of Moses is being fulfilled many, many generations later when he is long gone to glory and he's off the scene. There's a poem by Lao Tzu that says, go to the people, live with them, learn from them, love them. Start with what they know, build with what they have. But with the best of leaders, when the work is done, the task accomplished, the people will say, we have done this ourselves. And I see this as your legacy, Dr. Perkins, that so many people are doing themselves what God has called them to do, feeling empowered and boldly living out the incarnational ministry that our Lord modeled, and yet you have replicated so well. So I want to thank you. And that is also partly why I like wearing this kind of hat. Uh, Adam, thank you. Brother John, come on up. We'd love to um, give you an opportunity to close with a challenge to this Biola University community. And um, you are a prophetic voice, and you are loved dearly by colleges, students, this rising generation across the country. Some of these students are here today. Share with us a challenging word, and then we'll wrap this evening up. Thank you again. And let's express our appreciation one more time to Dr. John Perkins. Well, I, I really don't hardly know where to uh, start this at tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this has been so... Em this, yeah. It's, I... Guy named what's Wright's name? Dan Wright. I won't go through it all. He when he was a boy, I met him in a little school, elite school in in Atlanta, and uh, we became friends with his family. And this boy, this boy ends up getting called. Uh, this field is called to go to China and learn a language, and so he went to China, uh, educated, and when got ready to go to uh, start his life ministry, he came to Fuller, and he, he came up and he wanted to work with me there, and when he came there to work with me, uh, I was too busy doing two things around me, and I told him to, want, uh, I, I told him to get a broom and and go clean the amphitheater out and keep the I was just getting him out of my way. <laughs> for, th for three years, he brought the Chinese people up there, got married to a Chinese girl, worked in the treasure department in, uh, in Washington, and then went to China uh, to 
be a business leader when China was, you know, going, well, I went to China. He led one of the leading guys in China to Christ through giving him my book. And, uh, and he, um, he read the book, and he said, uh, this guy there in China today is what Gallup was 80 years ago. I mean, when he speak in China, uh, the economic community listened to him. And he, when he, he said to his guy, let's go to Mississippi and meet John. And uh, so the relationship ended up that we were going, since he is a poster, and since uh, he speaks for the economic community in China, uh, I, we wrote a book together. And I went to China then to uh, promote the book. He got a youth movement going of over 100,000 uh, Chinese in it. And when I, we went there to promote the book, it was 300,000 people online. And we talked in, uh, in, uh, in, in the big city, Shanghai, uh, did the same message, went to Beijing, and did the same uh, message. But let me close this. Uh, this uh, I think that's what I wanted to say <laughs> about him. But I quoted that Chinese poem, and I think that's what I want to do, because that became CCDA's poem, too. Go to the people, live among them, love them, plan with them, uh, uh, learn from them, start with what they know, build on what they have. And of the best leaders, you said, when our work is finished, our task is done, the people are going to say we've done it ourselves. And I thought I had said something, and one of the young guys said, uh, he called the name of the Chinese scholar who 2,000 years ago <laughs> quoted I thought I was saying something. I really thought I was quoting Mao Zedong. <laughs> I really thought I was quoting Mao Zedong. So, so I... I have re I'm now finishing up. I'm, I'm spending more time with Vera May. Uh, she done spent these last 12 years with me, and I was thinking a few years ago, I said, Lord, if she lived two more years and I live two more years, I have neglected her because she have kept me alive. I said, so I'm going to resign from all responsibility, you know, that called responsibility, and I'm going to spend more time. But what I really wanted to do is spend my rest of my life encouraging this generation. And then, brother, for you to invite me here, I, I can't believe that I'm here. I can't believe that God is doing exactly what I want to spend the rest of my life doing. And, and how and I is writing a sort of a book together. Uh, and I'm also writing something on, uh, on friendship. Uh, the model of discipleship and mission is friendship. Friendship, friendship. And if there is anything, Brian, you are just something. Mm -hmm. If anything, to be, to be I, I could tell you about another group I was with this week, uh, is, 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 is developing amps to develop churches. These are not starting there, reaching them as families and putting them in small groups together. And out of that developed church, we are at a pivot month time in the history of the world. We got the possibility of making a witness to the world. And when this gospel of the kingdom mm -hmm. have been preached in all the world for a witness, 
then Christ should come. We got the problem, and that should give us a sense of urgency. That, that's really what the second comment, it wasn't about all this eschatology and knowing the dead and that. It was to give us a sense of urgency. And now it's right here before us. And the planning of these churches all around the world is possible, possible. And it's got to be a, a, a central message. It's got to, and we have, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling that people are preaching the day with the, with the incarnation of message, the redemptive message today. So we're living in a, and, and uh, Roberta, you and I, you know, this has been a relationship. This has been a relationship. And, 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 uh, what, uh, and I, so I'm just, this is, this is a proud moment in my life. And, and to be here to see this, what you're doing. Plan it in other colleges around this country. And the young man that called them out tonight, I thought that was the best thing, that he could get there and call them out so that they could own it. This idea is how do we get people to own the mission? How do we get them to take responsibility for the mission? And so it's, uh, well, I... Uh, Mike is cooking up something for what can we father this legacy a little bit and how can we do it. But I, I really want it to be not imposed. I think I'm trying to think of it for myself like George Carver Washington like this. He, we don't know where this little baby who was his mother, who was his daddy, he was just a little orphan somewhere they found him. But when I was coming up, in every city, every town, there was a George Washington Carver's school. I would like to see the legacy. It might need nurturing. And, and, I, and I said, the philosophy, the philosophy, uh, the, some principles of development, the three hours of development, relocation, that's incarnation. Reconciliation, that's the mission. Redistribution is a good stewardship of the wealth. Justice is a management stewardship issue. What do you have in your hand? What do you give you? How do you, how do you turn that into mission? I think we, we, we can do it. And so, yeah, um, and Viola sponsoring this thing, getting it going, and taking responsibility for it. That's, we got to do it here and let them come to it. <laughs> do it at this place. So I'm just really uh, thrilled. And we want to stay in touch with you. And Brian, we want to stay in touch with you, all of you. Get in touch with it and see how we can live out these last days. Uh, Vera May is doing good, but she's sinking. But she's been living for me. And I do most of my work now in the house when I'm home. I do it in the house so I can be there and fix our breakfast and uh, take care. We do have a full-time person pretty much taking care of all of her health needs. And, and she has a, a doctor every week coming in. She have exercise people coming, people functioning. So y'all keep praying for us uh, here. That's all I want to say, I think. <laughs> Discover who you're called to be at Biola University, a leading Christ-centered university in Los Angeles, with programs on campus and online. Subscribe for more of our videos and learn more at biola.edu.